Hello everyone. The uh, our project's name was Search for Cyclonary Periodicity in Living Organisms, and we have worked with Clayton for it. First of all, to begin with, the all almost all of the organisms have those four basic rhythms because they have to um, they have to maintain their stability even though they live in an unstable nature that has lots of different periodicities and different imbalances. Our project was consisted of two parts, and at the first part, our aim was to create a catalog that has consisted of uh, the animals that have different uh, rhythms, and we have noted all of them. We have found 183 organisms. And uh, at the second part, we have analyzed the data, and our aim was to understand whether a killifish, whether a killifish have a rhythm uh, at their spawning of eggs. To begin with the first part, we have first read those two uh, articles, that they are review articles, and they have some important references. And then we have looked through these references and found some uh, organism names and then noted all of them. Uh, these are the figures that show in greater detail about those rhythms. And this is not an important part at this moment. This is our exile file, and as I said, it, it consists of 183 organisms, but here only one section of it is shown. And the blue rectangle, and, and the ones in the blue rectangle are the importing findings. Uh, we can see the relationship that these animals have and the related processes that these animals have with this relationship and the zeitgebers. Zeitgebers is the, they are the environmental cues, and by taking those environmental cues like light and temperature, the organisms can maintain their stabilities. They can understand what time it is and they can act accordingly. This is the beginning of our part two, the analysis. We were given the number of eggs, the age of the fish that has spawned these eggs, and the time of the year from 2005 till 2024, the time of the year that these eggs were spawned. We have the total number of eggs and the fertilized eggs, but we didn't use it. And then we have, I mean, Clayton has uh, found the phases of the moon, uh, but he will present this. My point is not this. First, I have, uh, I, I have analyzed the age and annual rhythms uh, data. First, I have begun by making, cre creating this graph using PRISM. And all of the data points correspond to the uh, table on the left. And this is actually a very long table, but there's only one section of it. I mean, the ages of the fish and the average number of eggs that the uh, eggs, the fish of this age produce are written here. And those but the data points are thus created. Then by using the analysis methods of prisms, I have created this uh, line. And then by uh, creating another y-axis, this line um, is translocated into here in the graph on the right. Then I am at another analysis, but this time I have also taken the account of the months. And then I have found the sum of the average ages of fish that have been uh, spawned, that have spawned their eggs in January. And I've done it for all of the months. But of course, I had to take the average of it for us to have a uh, right uh, analysis. And I have done it and then created this graph. And by curving this graph on the right, uh, on the right bottom is uh, created and formed. And I have done it and done the same, but this time for the average number of eggs. Now, this is the same graph that we talked about. This is the age versus average number of eggs graph. And in this graph, the C-section will be important. And we'll see a different, we have to see by taking this as basis, we have to see a current uh, constant decrease in the number of eggs produced uh, at the ages from 178 to 400. And this is again the average ages of fish by month graph. So what we have to see is that we have to see a uh, constant decrease at the number of uh, average, uh, average number of eggs from 236 to 334. But if you compare these two graphs, we see that it is not the case. The month that we expect the lowest number of eggs is actually not the, that number. So that we can come to a conclusion that those animals, those fish might have a circuit annual rhythm and the, that circuit annual rhythm might be coupled with the gravitational changes and the orbital changes of the Earth. Thank you for listening to me.